guys, we're sorry. We have no idea what happened. So we're going to record a video and post it for you ASAP. And you won't know that until you see this. We are very sorry. Technology, right? Like, we're at Sharon Woods. We didn't think we'd have a problem, but... No, we did not. Facebook cut us be. off. <laughs> we're just too gorgeous. So I'm here with Josh. Josh, four years in a row. This will be your fourth. Ohio Half Ironman. You did inaugural. Yes. Entire race. Second year entire race. Fell in love with running, so we did the run relay, and now you're doing the run relay again. Why Ohio? Why do you love Ohio? Tell me. Home state, first off. Um, it's pretty cool to be able to do a, you know, such a big race like that in your own home state. It's close to home, a couple hours away. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy for family to get there. And uh, the CTC club is always had a huge representation there whether racing or cheering um, there may be just as many people up there cheering from the club that actually race you know which is pretty cool so mm -hmm. and you had an amazing memorable experience a few years ago and so before we get to that for those in the club who don't know you tell us a little bit about you professional personal little tidbits about other hobbies besides going from other athletics to triathlons. Fill us in on who Josh is. Well, hello, I'm Josh, if you don't know me. Um, professionally, I work for a road uh, contractor, so I mill and pave roads. So you cuss me and thank me when you have <laughs> milled roads, you're probably not happy with me. And when you get a freshly paved road to ride your bike on, you're probably extremely happy that we did the work. So uh, you're welcome, I guess. <laughs> don't cuss me too bad. <laughs> Um, uh, I have two kids that are seven and nine. Uh, they're to that age now where they're starting to get involved in sports. Um, my daughter has done a triathlon, I think it was last year or two years ago, up at Lebanon YMCA. Um, she enjoyed it. She really did. Uh, she's starting to run more, trying to, she wants to get into some 5K, so we're going to start running at the park together and get build up her endurance so she can do that. My son, he plays anything that involves a ball, a stick, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, Weapons. He's a, yeah. he's a typical boy. <laughs> Runs around. He's got more energy than we'll ever have again. So um, it's good. Uh, and your wife? Tell us about your wife. My wife is number one fan. Uh, awesome. and God bless her for letting me and the kids kind of do this crazy stuff. And she puts up with it. She puts up with me going in the basement for three hours on the trainer in the winter time or whatever <laughs> so or you know a three hour run or a hundred mile bike ride on the weekend she'll and does some super spectating and she does she is always there for the most part That's she awesome. is always there so yeah i couldn't ask for anything better out of that awesome. from her so and so you camp you do triathlons you used to do a lot of other sports like volleyball etc so you're pretty competitive right yes Would you say yeah all right, and then Ohio, I'd love for you to share more about why you fell in love with running, but Ohio, tell us about the most memorable experience at Ohio, one or two of them. I would say um, the most memorable experience at Ohio has nothing to do with the actual race. It was the night before the inaugural race, there was a um, tornado that came through the campground slash beach area. So, you know, a million dollars of bikes sitting there and it probably missed it by a few hundred yards at most. I can't imagine the phone calls going on that night with the Ironman camp and all the spectators. It was uh, sitting at the camper. Uh, Mike Buskin was staying with me that year. We had just finished grilling whatever, just cleaning up the grill and, and whatever. And I'm like, man, it, it's weird. It's calm out right now. You know, there's nothing. There's no storms on the radar there's no warnings or nothing really all of a sudden it looked like there was a million birds in the sky and you could see the funnel cloud and it was all the leaves and sticks flying around wow. and if you've ever been to delaware's campground it's wooded everywhere there's little pockets of opening through the trees so you're looking up in this one little area of the sky to see it so yeah needless to say the night before race i was huddled in a uh the campground restrooms with a bunch of random strangers hoping that we were going to be okay. Hoping the camper would still be there, the bikes would be there. 
Wow. Yeah, that was wow. uh, that so was interesting. You, it gives you a new perspective on if you forget something. It's not that big it's a not deal. Not that big a deal compared to we are having a tornado right now. Yeah, that's um, true. Which, I mean, that's part of the sport, right? Yep. Being able to be adaptable and resourceful because things happen. Yes, they Those do. Get canceled, routes get changed, um, but people have been spending months preparing for that. Yes. And you gave a great tip when we were chatting to ourselves when we thought we were Facebook Live. <laughs> about transition so let's talk more about transition and you have another memorable experience so let's talk about that on the run um with aaron that you shared Correct. earlier so we'll talk about that but the transition you made a great comment about how people should approach that so there are two transitions at ohio yes uh, ohio has two transitions um so you'll get out of the out of the swim and your bike will be there in transition one which is in the park in the parking lot and then you'll do the, the ride to 56 miles and you'll go to transition two which is in the stadium right by the finish line where you'll get your run gear and go out um, and the biggest thing I can say is don't overthink it, it it's a triathlon of any distance we, we do the same thing race morning the only difference is you'll get on a shuttle or ride your your car from transition two to transition one so pack your shoes your hat race belts nutrition all that there's you know don't don't overthink it don't get nervous about being in two different areas um, just make sure the night before you lay everything out like you normally would put all your run gear in the run bag and your bike gear in, in your bike bag and, and you'll be fine there's, there you go that's all i can don't overthink it. yeah don't overthink it just keep it simple like you do every other race so and then the run transition is inside the stadium where you yes. drop your bike off to go out on the run what are your thoughts about that stadium transition? I like it. It can help you. Um, and, I'll, and the reason it can help you is you're on a football field. There's marks every yard down the football field. So know where your bike rack's at. If you're on the 30 yard line, the 40 yard line, midfield, you know, the other 30 on the other side, you can run your bike in, you know, and read the numbers that are four foot high on a football field and know where you need to go to get to your bike rack. Um, yeah. and, and even then on which side of the field you're on, whether you're on the far hash or the, the close hash when you come in, you know where you're at, you know, there's all those markings. You normally don't have that in a, in a transition area. It's normally just a field or a parking lot and mm -hmm. it does make it nice to do. And I figured that out the first year and I've told a couple people when you see them off, they're like, you know, when you come off the bike, just remember you're. 35 yard line on the far side and you'll be fine and that morning when you you camp there often yes. it's very close but making sure you plan out for trans transitioning there from your house uh, making sure you eat on friday and saturday throughout all this setup and preparation yes iron man village is right next to the stadium oh yes yeah, so it's but right there you go to delaware state park to set your bike. yeah it's about six miles away um where, where the lake is and Delaware State Park is. So you can't, I mean, I guess you could walk or run it, but it's a pretty busy road. I wouldn't yeah. want to ride yeah. my bike up it. So um, I would take the shuttle, or, you know, you can set your stuff in transition two on Saturday or just bring it all with you Sunday morning. Uh, take your bike up to the park and put in transition one mm -hmm. after you check in, so. Right, and going out of transition, at the run, they do a great job at Ohio, of course, Ironman brand event, but there's great volunteers up there in Columbus who spray everyone down with sunscreen, which is one less thing you have to worry about yes. having at your station, because it can be hot in the Midwest. In July. Oh, it can be very hot. We gotta protect ourselves, right? Yes. Um, so those who, so folks wear the cooling shirts, but sometimes we don't, and we have exposed shoulders and legs and arms. So, and when you roll out on that run, uh, you get to see these crazy CT3 people on the way out and on the way back in. Yes, you do. Close to Iron Man Village and, and, um, and you had an experience. When you ran out, I did in 2017, I start out on the run and it's hot and I get up and around the corner, I'm, out, I'm going out on the lollipop stick and PJ Arling is just flying in yeah. to get ready to go head to uh, finish line, which was awesome. You get all excited, you scream his name. I saw his wife, Gwen, super spectator. And then I realized I still had the run to do. <laughs> He's done. And you had a similar experience. Yeah, uh, my first year, um, 2016, the inaugural year for Ohio, they do wave starts on the swim, so I didn't get to start my swim till real late in the day. Yeah. Yes. 
But uh, when I was running out of transition to start my run, uh, Aaron Geiser was coming in. Uh, so a high five and a, hey, you got this. And it's amazing what that will do to your confidence at the beginning of a run, knowing you still got a, you know, two hours or so or whatever to out in the heat, especially in the afternoon. Right. Uh, absolutely. And depending on how your day has gone. Yes. Uh, you could, give, could be having the race plan that's exceeding all expectations or a hiccup, right? Uh, Correct. Flat or a situation with the bike or the swim, your goggles getting knocked off. So it is exciting. And we have over 50 people heading up there this weekend and a cheer squad. So if you're not wearing a CTC kit, fear not, just holler out CTC every once no. in a while. Because we don't always recognize each other. Correct. I ran into Sean at the pool the other day and I, you know, goggle face and swimsuit. And now you yeah. see him in a helmet on a bike. So um, we're, it, it's great to be out there and get that boost from others. So yeah, and we it, all appreciate that. When you go out on that run too, uh, there's a lot of people in the beginning mile mile and a half of the yes. run course uh it's right downtown delaware at the stadium uh all the tri clubs are lined up on the one side of the road so there's every, you know it's loud coming out of mm -hmm. out of transition two and it can quiet down a little it it can out on the run it can get uh there's there's some places there's not many people <laughs> it's like running on a trail in loveland or just a quiet Sunday morning run in Ohio. It can be pretty quiet. Now there are some neighbors who have the spray, the hoses out. Oh yeah, spot. there's. Uh, but it's one of the reasons why CTC is going to have a run spot this year. Um, and there's costume rumors and some other fun things going on. So <laughs> I wouldn't surprise me with this. You know, group. really? No, <laughs> no gosh. not at all. I, I, I thought maybe people would be shocked. But, you know, maybe I'm losing no. the, the shock effect. Okay. Yeah, I think you've been in the club too long. You don't have that shock <laughs> effect anymore. It's gone. Oh, no. Now what? Oh, shoot. I got to come up with something. Any other tips for, for, for transition, whether it's the shovel use that morning, spectator tip that morning, um, when it comes to transitions, which are a key piece, can be overthought and a key element of, of the try event. Yeah, like I said earlier, uh, if you're an athlete, don't overthink it. Um, if you're spectating, uh, my wife actually randomly did this the first year. She parked across from the entrance to the state park, paid some guy to park in his yard. He was taking money and letting people park there. And so she walked down, watched me, you know, get in the water, swim, get on my bike. And then she walked to her car, drove down to um, the town of Delaware where the transition to is, and then parked saw me come in to transition to leave onto the run like we discussed it's a lollipop run course so mm -hmm. she walked out to where you start your second loop got to see me there then walked back to what would be the finish line you know back to transition two and then saw me finish uh the the bike is hard to see people because of the layout um and you're going from one spot to another point to point bike but the run you can see them i'd say three times that's a great tip on it seems wise because it is a long day spectating is a sport yes um, nothing against our athletes and, and those of us participating in the actual event but you can go to the swim you can either park inside the park or park outside of it so you can get down yes. to run transition and finish line and that's the second place that's really the easiest way with all the logistics because the rest of the area is still living like a Sunday morning is normal. Oh, yes. Yeah. And we know the cities try to maintain that um, because the bike course is hard to get out on. And um, But any anything about the bike course, it's pretty flat. You mentioned it's point to point. It's real flat. I did, it, the first year was a little bit different. I think it had like 40-something turns in it. Woo. And uh, it was crazy. Um, <laughs> they've made it they've changed it the last three years this being the third year for this bike course uh and it's flat and it's fast Pretty good. Um, yeah. you can get in a zone mm -hmm. when you're when you're on the bike so which is a good thing you don't have to worry about constantly turning and slowing down and stuff so yeah. it's mainly two-lane roads so you will have some traffic going around you uh, but for the most part it's People are pretty considerate out there. I, did, I haven't had any problems. I agree, so. and we have such a great club, and I think it goes without saying, but good sportsmanlike conduct, but reminding ourselves to be aware when we're upcoming uh, to a water station, if, whether yes. you're going through it. Uh, but wake yourself up so that you are mindful of other athletes who could be having uh, a bad moment 
and, and literally stop on your bike. You know, be aware that when you slow down, you go from 21 or 18 miles an hour to 10, that's a quick, Yeah. that's like slamming on brakes. So um, we just want people to be safe, to be mindful. Um, swim course change also happens. And have you done the swim since they? I have not. Okay. Well, we'll touch on that. The spectator guide has that information. Um, yeah, they. And it has a lot to do with sun and trying to keep things as fluid, no pun intended, but um, the experience the best for the athletes who are competing. And the temperatures, I'm sure everyone's watching whether it will be wetsuit legal, which I, I won't comment on. Yeah, I have no I idea. I don't think it will be, <laughs> but I just said I wouldn't comment, and then I just did. But it's, it's Midwest Ohio. It's pretty warm these days. We had a really warm weekend last weekend, and then good weather, though, this coming weekend, I think, for July. But on the bike course, you did mention the heat can be a factor. Yeah, I mean, it's July in Ohio, yeah. so it, it's going to be hot. Um, one recommendation I would have is I personally can get in the zone on the bike, and I'll forget to drink, and I'm a heavy sweater, so I need the, the fluids in me, especially for the run is I set my watch to go off every 15 minutes. That way, if I'm not drinking, it reminds me, hey, try to drink a bottle an hour, whatever whatever your nutrition is that you're following, stay on that schedule. And That's a great piece of advice. And, and for all of us to take our watches or bike computers and go in and set those notifications, lap notifications, screens, what you want on it now, for this weekend instead of having to try and do that Saturday night. Yeah, and I'm yeah. sure most of us probably train doing that as probably. far as I would think. Um, I do, because it's the same way even just training, riding, you'll get in the zone, mm -hmm. you won't see a car or nothing and be an hour in and realize you haven't drank anything. Yeah. So I yep. train that way too, where my watch goes off every 15 minutes and if I'm not, it reminds me to take nutrition. So we're out on that lollipop run. And we're coming in towards, well, coming in to, and you see CTC again, and you're heading. To, tell us about your experience or your thoughts on the finish line for Ohio. I I think it's one of. Granted, I've only done Ohio and Louisville, um, but I like it. I like the fact that you finish on the track, on the back stretch of the track, so you have the whole visitors grandstands, which I'd say. Is, a quarter full maybe and uh it's loud in the stadium too when you're finishing you you come in the stadium you run the semicircle on the back side and come down the, the straightaway and finish in the shoot it's it's pretty neat finish the way they have it set up which is right. something to you'll remember that if you know if this is your a race or you know your your big race for this year your life or whatever so and and, and what a feeling to be on that track heading toward the finish line. It can be, you almost feel like you're part of the USATF or you know, that you're you're competing at the pre-Olympics trials. It's just a lot of fun to have that kind of finish line. It might be the fastest quarter mile you run it all day. It might be the fastest quarter mile. Because <laughs> you forget every pain in your body. <laughs> Everything that hurts at that point. Because <laughs> you're finishing and it, it wasn't yep. just that race that day, which is significant. It's all the work leading up to it. Correct. And so it is a great finish and a, a really exciting way to be medaled too. You, know, you get yes. the medal and then you can go eat and have fun and, and come up and spectate with the rest of us. At, yeah, you uh, can. Right up on the main road. So. Yeah, we're not too far away to CTC <laughs> tenant. <laughs> so you gave one of your spectator tips that your wife figured out about parking outside of the park because you cannot get out of the park if you park inside. You cannot get out until the last cyclist leaves. Correct. And that was one of the advantages, parking outside. She was yes. able to just walk. It's a little bit of a walk. But it's a little bit of a walk, but it's it's not bad. It's flat. She does so. a marathon every day. She kids and oh, work she and runs life. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, any other spectator tips that you would give to our families that are going to be up there and friends and cheer squad? None that I can think of. Okay. Um, even last year, I rode from transition one back to transition two with uh, the Walshes and Cameron had parked out too in that same spot. So mm -hmm. it's actually, it works out very well. Um, if you have somebody spectating, have them park outside the park so that they can get back yeah. down there. Um, yeah, it's, 
I didn't know about that. I think that's awesome. And uh, this year we're going to have CTC cheer squad, uh, Justin for sure, at the swim start for pretty much the entire time. And one of the other things that I didn't realize until I was there that morning, and we went late, my age group went really late, but the gear truck, all the bags, mm -hmm. if you have gear, you need to go on the truck. It leaves before your swim starts. Yes. Um, and so just to think about that, not overthink it, but think about the fact that if you need some nutrition, keep it on you, because you might be waiting for a while. Well, and, and that's one of the changes too in the swim they've made is they've gone to the self-seating yes. rolling start where the first two years I did as an age grouper, they started based on your age group. So I was like second or third last group to get in the water. So I was getting in the water at 820, yeah, starting right. my swim. There are plenty of people already out on the bike <laughs> before I'm even in the water, you know? Right. So, uh, and like you said, you, you if you don't have somebody there with you, I was fortunate enough to have my wife both times that I could keep a bag and everything I needed. But if you had to get rid of that stuff, yep. And then you got an hour and 20 minutes or whatever before you're getting in the water. Yeah. What do you do with, you know, I mean, at least it was, it's cooler in the mornings. So I kept a long sleeve shirt on. Mm -hmm. You don't have anywhere to put any of that if that bag yep. takes off and you got to have it in there by seven. Exactly. And, and it makes sense why the truck has to leave. Yes. So just plan for those little pieces if you don't have someone there. But we will have CTC folks there um, to be supportive. Uh, I mean, granted, we can't take like, you know, a hundred bags, but yeah. um, we will be there and we'll be at, on the run as well and um, and there to help and we'll be available on Saturday too. If you forget something, message on Facebook. Uh, there's a real good chance. Oh, somebody will have, have something. goggles There'll be, <laughs> that we can bring up. There'll be um, goggles. And that's what we're here for. Bike tool. I mean, we'll have it water all. Bottles. Uh, uh, yeah, extra water bottles. I heard a woman at Muncie bottle. racing through find, trying to find extra water bottles. She left hers at the hotel. And um, which we had one of our club members do that she, last year. Last year. Yeah, I think so. All right. I guess I'm putting extra water bottles in my car. Two years ago, man. I don't know, one of the just years. Just gonna bring them. Yeah, the, the, we got plenty. There's. <laughs> we got, we've all got water there, bottles. Yes. But don't hesitate. And um, any other memorable experiences, challenging moments, or tips about transition that when you think of Ohio and planning for it, it's here. It is July. It is. We're all getting the messages from our schools about kids going back and all sorts of life things for the fall. So any anything else that comes to mind for you as you plan for it? Just have fun, smile. Right. Stuff will go wrong and stuff will go right during your race. If you can just smile through it all, you'll, you'll have a better race in the mm -hmm. end. Um, just take it in, you know, slow down if, to, you know, to the finish. You know, it's pretty neat running down that, that back stretch of that track to finish. So look around and see everybody up in the stand. It, it's a pretty neat experience. You're right. I mean, like you said earlier, it could be the fastest quarter mile you have. Yes. But once you go under that, you no one's forcing you out to the food station. You can hang out, take it in, and look up, look around. Because, um, man, what an accomplishment. What, it is. What hard work that goes into it. And previous potential injuries or life's happening and and here you are doing a half Ironman or a relay. Yeah, it's day, uh, so. there's a lot, like you said, a lot of time, uh, energy, money, sweat, blood, tears, all of it, all of it. going into it. So Family sacrifices. Soak it up, yeah, you know. And real quick on the relay, uh, we had two relay teams for CTC at Muncie and something that you, you knew going into it was that you were a team and you were part of a bigger team. But Andrew and myself and, and, and the others out there, what really hit us as well on the course was someone, there were other people depending on us to get our leg done, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you've done relays and you do the run. So tell me more about how running became such a passion for you and then your what, what you love about relays. And we got a lot of relay teams this weekend. Too. We do. Um, well, I, I was never a runner, confession. Um, uh, I did not run in high school, grade school. I mean, I ran for training, you know, sure. conditioning for other sports. We all run our Basketball, lives, really. football, way, right? everything, you know. Yeah. Uh, Self-admit, I played volleyball and golf in high school. So, <laughs> that, not the two sports you would think of somebody going into doing triathlons later in life. But, um, no, I got into running about eight years ago. My sister and a couple of her friends were doing the pig half and said, hey, you want to do this with us? I said, I've done a couple of 5Ks. Yeah, let me see if I can make it and signed up, did that. And uh, the 
the spectator support on the pig had me addicted from that morning. I didn't even start to race yet and knew the next year I was doing the full pig and I did, yes. It, I was already made up my mind that I didn't care what happened during the race. But you hadn't run the, I mean, that's not I didn't even run the course, course yet. No, no, no. It's not I, an easy course. I already, I'm more full. No, I already knew. And uh, I mean, the pig, the whole course, there were people everywhere on the half. And Sometimes I was addicted. Oh, yeah. And I was addicted from day one, from that day. And uh, started running and about four years ago started triathlons. Uh, wow. Was talked into it by. Mike Buskin and Jessica Leonard. So. There seems to be that theme in these sports as adults. We all get talked into something, right? Yes. Like, seems like a good idea, and then here we are. Yeah, Mike said, you should try it. I think you'd like it. You should try it. Sure, I don't own a bike. I haven't ridden one since I was probably 15 <laughs> when we got to start getting our license, you know? And then it's one of the hardest things to adapt yeah. again as an adult. Sure, I'll try to ride a bike again. <laughs> so, uh, no, but I'm so glad he, he got me to do it. Really? I've, uh, Met, Why? Oh, I, you've met, meet so many neat people along the way and their stories of hows and why they do what they do um, and just the camaraderie of the team. I mean, that's, I played basketball and volleyball till I couldn't physically do what I expected me to do. And that's when I started really running. And you get that team camaraderie, although you only compete against yourself. It, it's a lot like, golf you compete against you in the course in the same way with running and triathlon you're competing against you are you mentally strong enough have you you know done what you need to do and it don't matter what anybody else does you review in your time and what your goal is so yeah. I enjoy that competitive aspect of running and triathlon well I gotta say on that right there it's a wrap thank you so thank much. you um, Unless you have anything else you want to add, that was thanks for sharing that there at the end, and and really thrilled that you gave the time today to, to do this. I really no, appreciate it. I can't wait to see everybody up there having Me a too. good time. Uh, I'm gonna see you on the run. Be, being on a relay, I get to sit around all morning and watch people swim and bike, and then I finally go run. There you go. <laughs> and are you signed up for Louisville? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, no, I. I did Louisville in 17, okay. I believe. Yeah, 17. Uh, last couple of years have been family time because there's a lot of training yep. that goes into it. So. And, yep, and fall is a busy, I mean, every month. Every month busy. I joke busy, that the race, when... get, there is really no season. It's because all these companies are doing a great job encouraging people to race any month out of the year. Yes. Which is wonderful because then you can plan what's best for you and your family and your work situation and, and life. So. Um, amazing that we have the amount of opportunities here in the Midwest and then through big brands like Tough Man and Iron Man and I'm sure there's others, uh, yes. Premier Event and Escape Series and Lifetime. So it's exciting. We're really blessed, but we want to give everyone a huge shout out for this weekend. Have a blast. Eat well, sleep well. Nutrition and hydrate is so key this week. Um, your fitness is there. Now we just got to go do it. Yep. Enjoy it. it. Smile the whole right. time. It'll make the. It, it's amazing if you just smile. Yeah. How much right. the more enjoyable yeah. the race is. Right. And um, and if you haven't checked him out, I was sharing about Elliot Kapoje, so the fastest marathon runner in the world. And his mantra is "No human is limited." And you guys aren't. And we're excited to see you out there. And give crazy high fives and lots of smiles too. So um, have a great time this weekend, guys. We'll see you there. Sure. <laughs>